there's a guy named uh, Derek. He's got a website called More Plates, More Dates, and he uh, he talks a lot about uh, hormone optimization, all kinds of stuff, but also recovering hair loss. And w there's a bunch of different things you can do. This. So guys, Derek, moreplacemoreandates.com. Today we're gonna to be doing another Meathead Chemist episode where we react to the intro of the most recent JRE episode where they talk about hair loss prevention and a hypothetical stack for uh, Ari Shafir. So here in this uh, episode, they talk about briefly, you know, my channel and some hair loss prevention shit. And I'll be getting into exactly what I would recommend to revive him from the dead, essentially. You decided to shave your head now, huh? Yeah, Enough. I like it. It's what? It's better, right? It's Enough. smoother and it's easier. Yes. Yeah. So much better. Yeah. Imagine going to a barber shop now. God took care of a lot of it. God took care of it. <sighs> yeah. Yes. God cursed you. Too much scalp. I want it back. Do you? I want. I yeah. I really want to do a mohawk correctly. Oh. Huh. And I want it for a little bit. Remember how much fun I'd have with my hair. Well, you could do stuff with your hair to get it back that's not as dangerous as uh, that the- uh, Staples? No, 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 no. There's uh, ways, there's there's a guy named uh, Derek. He's got a website called More Plates, More Dates. And he, uh, he talks a lot about uh, hormone optimization, all kinds of stuff, but also recovering hair loss. And w there's a bunch of different things you can do. There's topical shampoos that remove DHT from the scalp that help bring your hair back. But it'll get back? I don't know, man, you're pretty far gone. Okay, so stuff, you know, topical shampoos, what is he talking about? Specifically, he's talking about ketoconazole shampoo. This is a antifungal slash dandruff shampoo, but it also works as a mild anti-androgen. Basically, what you need to know is how androgens facilitate their effects as they bind to something called an androgen receptor in different tissues in the body, including in your hair, follicles, specifically in your scalp, and it transcribes uh, gene expression. So it's like, if you have DHT, which has a much higher binding affinity, it's much more androgenic than testosterone, that 5-alpha reduction from testosterone to DHT, if you've heard of the 5-alpha reductase enzyme, this is what finasteride inhibits to prevent testosterone from converting to DHT. Basically, both of these are androgens. DHT is just more problematic than testosterone in that regard. And ketoconazole shampoo is something that all but extremely mildly competes for the androgen receptor. Now, how effective is that going to be in practical application with something you're leaving on your head for 10 to 15 minutes? You know, anecdotally and, you know, at least clinically, we see like decent enough outcomes to justify its use given that it's an over-the-counter thing. It's not a prescription drug. It's something that's very well tolerated. There's no, you know, adverse effects that we've seen really at all. And it's just a good, you know, shampoo in general. So now I don't mean necessarily getting Nizoral on its own with ketoconazole, although that is the most cost-effective way to do it. That shit will dry the fuck out of your hair. I recommend getting a high-quality shampoo that has ketoconazole in it, among with other ingredients that make it a high quality shampoo in general. Um, this is just the one that I've been using as of late for a while now. I'll put it in the uh, video description below as well as the pinned comment. And it has 1% ketoconazole in it, which acts as a mild anti-androgen. Basically how that works is it binds to the androgen receptor and competes with DHT and testosterone and prevents it to some extent from binding. Now, again, Anecdotally, do we see that it helps? Yeah, we do. Do I think it's worth adding as an over-the-counter thing, given you're already gonna be using a shampoo anyways? Absolutely. So that is the first kind of like obvious go-to thing, well-tolerated, essentially side effect free, pretty much a no fucking brainer. That's, I, there's this um, Amazonian like treatment for it. Amazonian? Yeah, Ungurawa. Ooh. And um, and then I found this lady who was like, uh, there's a lot of fake shit on the market there. Ooh, can I curse on this? And um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> drop, let's drop. I sorry. I won't do it again. Okay. So um, as far as what else you can do, like I'll just mention like the main kind of like heavy hitters in this not episode. I was about to say like in this video <laughs> that I'm posting. So we talk about the ketoconazole shampoo. That is part of something called the big three. I did a YouTube short recently called what are, what is the big three for hair loss prevention? This is kind of like the three kind of 
most popular main go-tos and, and a stack that is pretty tried and true. Unless you have aggressive hair loss, you're quite likely to prevent any further miniaturization, at least for a while. You'll be slowly progressing there, but far less so to the point that you can get to old age with you know, much more of your hair than you would have otherwise. So what else can you do besides the ketoconazole? That is the first thing. The second thing, to be honest, you know, minoxidil, you guys are probably thinking of. The first thing I would defer to before minoxidil, this little thing here, are you gonna focus? Is called finasteride. Now, this is the most tried and true hair loss prevention thing there is essentially it is very easy to adhere to typically with topical applications people one of the biggest issues is adhering to the application schedule a lot of people will fall off and end up you know losing ground because they cannot adhere to applying the shit to their head on a regular basis with finasteride it's a pill that takes two seconds to swallow and no one has a problem sticking to that. And it is one of the most effective ways to prevent the further miniaturization of your hair follicles by inhibiting the enzymatic process that converts testosterone to DHT in the scalp. If somebody is this far gone, is it gonna regrow much though? Like again, a lot of this stuff is proactive prevention favored in that if you start early enough, you're not gonna get to a point like Ari has where you have to have like aggressive recovery rather it's a lot easier to prevent loss than it is to recover lost ground like after a while the environment in your scalp is so fucked up and dysregulated that it's kind of hard to get back to a baseline using some of this stuff because at the end of the day this stuff does not like castrate you which to be honest if you wanted like to go from bald to like nearly perfect head of hair again that's like one of the main the only way to fucking do it pretty much you know, hair transplants plus like a, like a fucking castration essentially. However, I'm not even suggesting you do that obviously, but what I'm saying is you can get a decent amount back. It's simply not going to be, you know, back to 18 year old, you know, fucking perfect model hairline though, of course. So you have to have realistic expectations and I'll show you some before and afters once we get through the protocol of good responders slash, you know, expectations. So Next thing I would recommend is microneedling. Now, a lot of people would probably think I would recommend minoxidil before microneedling, but to be honest, minoxidil is the most difficult of all of the treatments to adhere to. Why is that? It's because you have to apply it every single day and there's a shedding phase involved. With finasteride, with ketoconazole shampoo, if you start it, you're not gonna go through, well, you may go through a shedding phase with finasteride, but it's not like it's associated with like a giant shed when you start it as well as when you stop it. With, fina with finasteride, you have a buildup too of 5-alpha reductase inhibition, whereby you have you know, a decent amount of groundwork where you've inhibited your DHT for a while, so it takes you know, a decent amount of time for it to kick back up and start miniaturizing your hair again. Whereas with something like minoxidil, it has an accumulative effect. You can get away with not using it every single day. However, this drug in particular acts as a vasodilator, a potassium channel opener. This is minoxidil, by the way, and I highly recommend you get a fast drying one because the shit you have to apply on a daily basis. And if you pick one that is greasy as fuck, like the Kirkland stuff from Costco, the most cost effective one, by all means, get it. If you, you know, want the cheapest one, you can get like six, six months supply for like 40 or 50 bucks off Amazon. But that stuff makes your hair look like dog shit. So if you want something that's fast drying is a high quality preparation, I would recommend getting, you know, a brand that has actually designed their formula based around something that's fast drying and doesn't make your hair look like ass. So I'll put that in the description slash pinned comment as well with the fastest drying one I am aware of. But again, if you want to save money on all this shit, Nizerol shampoo, a fraction of the cost of this makes your hair look malnourished though, because it's only Nizerol, ketoconazole and the actual shampoo. There's nothing else in it but it's cost effective and it'll do the same shit for hair loss prevention. Minoxidil, the fast drying one, you know, is far more expensive than the cheap Costco version that's, you know, 40 bucks, Kirkland. So yeah, but anyways, the actual mechanism by which it works, opening potassium channels, vasodilation, potentially some interactions with other mechanisms that are, it's kind of like misunderstood compound despite it being around forever. It's originally a blood pressure medication that was repurposed as a hair growth stimulant after they realized that people were experiencing like excessive hair growth when they were using it orally. So this is a medication that has largely been phased out by other blood pressure regulating medications like ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, 
but topically it is still used to induce vasodilation on the scalp and bring about new hair growth and there is no growth stimulant that is as potent as minoxidil. Now, why do I recommend the Derminator, Derma Rolling, before minoxidil? It is because minoxidil, once you start it, you're gonna go through a brutal shedding phase. And this can be debilitating mentally for individuals who are already experiencing hair loss and just see it get worse before it gets better. This is your hair cycle essentially recycling and going into a better, more prolonged, healthier antigen phase. Now for Ari, he's fucking slick bald, so it doesn't even matter. For him, it's like only up from here. So for him, he has a lot of, you know, there's no expectations that are gonna be fuck, like ruined given that his baseline is like, nothing is worse than it. Like no offense, like obviously if you're bald like that, I don't think you would even take offense to that because it's just a fact. So anyways, <laughs> the fucking Derminator is something that via wounding, microneedling, you induce the recruitment of growth factors to the scalp that otherwise would not be present and allows for pretty significant regrowth. Now, the mechanism by which it works is the release of platelet-derived growth factor. Epidermal growth factors are increased through platelet activation skin wound regeneration mechanism. Activation of stem cells in the hair bulge area under wound healing conditions, which is caused by a derma roller. I'm just reading this straight off of the paper that basically outlined how effective minoxidil concurrently is with derma rolling, so just bear with me for a sec. Overexpression of hair growth related genes, vascular endothelial growth factor, beta catenin, WINT 3A, and WINT 10B. These are two genes that encode for enzymatic processes in the body. And these, you know, three kind of mechanisms by which microneedling works ultimately facilitate hair growth irrespective of minoxidil application. Now, why do I recommend it before minoxidil finally getting to that point is that it's non-drug related. It's non-hormonal. It's not something that's going to cause a shedding phase. It's not going to do anything. You're not introducing a drug that lowers blood pressure, you know, fucks with potassium channels into your body. You're literally just like lightly wounding your head, recruiting growth factors to the area, inducing super physiological growth essentially. So it's a no brainer to include, even if you're not using minoxidil, microneedling will actually help on its own. Now it's not nearly as effective as it is concurrently with the growth stimulant like, min like minoxidil, but it's effective nonetheless. And it's worth adding in, especially if somebody is willing, wanting to reduce their drug burden and wants to use something that still works. So we have so far the ketoconazole, finasteride at you know, an entry level dose would be like 0.2 to 0.25 milligrams to assess your response. You can titrate up to one milligram and if you respond well, which the majority of people will. And then wounding. Now, above and beyond that, the thing that is the hardest to adhere to is this. Now the wounding, you only need to do once a week at 1.5 millimeter depth, extremely easy to adhere to, quite uncomfortable, but pretty easy to adhere to. It's only once a week, it's like a 15 minute session. Fucking sucks, but it makes a big difference. So I would definitely recommend it, non-drug related, Fucking awesome. Minoxidil, the growth stimulant most people are aware of. This on its own, like more than half of people who use it are not good responders to this compound. However, if you do respond well to it, the regrowth can be quite significant. However, there is something which people overlook quite often, which is a way to literally like 1.5 to 2x your results when you use minoxidil and that is using it concurrently with this believe it or not. Using the two in conjunction with one another has shown to drastically increase the results you would otherwise have got with this. And to be honest, you actually have less overall drug necessity because this you would apply otherwise at minimum once a day, seven days a week, which is fucking annoying. When you use the microneedling device, once a week when you microneedle, you do not apply minoxidil in that day because you would otherwise introduce too much of it into systemic circulation through the wounds. So you otherwise skip it on that day, but the other six days a week you use it. And in doing this, you actually significantly increase your results. If you look at this study, this is the most notable one comparing minoxidil use to minoxidil plus once per week, 1.5 millimeter microneedling. And we can see mean hair counts here pre and post after 12 weeks of use. Baseline, 226 in the derma roller minoxidil group, 201 in the minoxidil group. The difference is only 17 in mean hair count for minoxidil only, however, for the derma roller plus minoxidil group, 226 to 317, we have almost a 100 increase in mean hair count pre and post. And if you look at some of these before and afters, this is the microneedling group. These are some pretty fucking significant before and afters. And this is without finasteride. This is without ketoconazole. This is literally microneedling and minoxidil after only three months. 
This is minoxidil only. You still see difference, but not nearly as substantial as you do with microneedling plus minoxidil. Like these guys are going from extremely diffuse to, you know, not fucking perfect, but such a drastic recovery. And we see some pretty insane before and afters too, when you actually get into the full protocol itself in some of my videos I've done in the past. Like this was a video I did called the Big Three Hair Stack Hyper Responder, insane three and a half months results. And I'll show a few others after I get into, uh, what else do I have to say here in uh, the rest of the clip? I don't know if I missed something. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. And so she could smell it and tell like, that's for real. Like, oh no way, that's got a lot of corn oil. And I was like, oh. to this botanist guy, I was like, will it work? And he was like, yes. And then he looks up and he goes, unless you're too far gone, <laughs> then it yeah. will not work. But he goes, none of those people in the Amazon have hair loss. Really? And that's why, yeah, all those fucking, we talked mostly about all those. Mostly it's genetic though. Definitely, it is mostly genetic. And if you're fighting against your genetics though, is there shit you can do to slow it down significantly to a point that you eventually end up dying without having lost the majority of your hair? Yeah, <laughs> like that is, that's the point of this shit though. Cause at the end of the day, the majority of us are very prone, you know, however many people like your rate and progression and aggr how aggressive the hair loss is, is going to vary person to person. But there are very few people with fucking Ronald Reagan immaculate hair genetics that can get away with nothing. Yeah. Yeah, mostly it's genetic. If a lot of people in the Amazon don't have it, I doubt it's because they're all oh, rubbing leaves on their head. I get what you're saying. Because uh, it's not a, th a common thing amongst uh, Native Americans that are pure blood. Uh, pure blood, rather. Really? Yeah. Yeah, people that are pure Native American, it's not Everyone a Everyone talks how hard thing. it is to be Native American, but ah! the full locks of hair. Well, you do have to realize that 95% of them died from the plague. Yeah, and then there's a litter also, mm. which they never liked. Litter? You know. Oh, the Indian that cried? Yeah. yeah the the <laughs> that was, pollution? That was the last 5% was yeah. like, come on, guys. There's 5% of us. People had abandoned the town. They hadn't figured it out yet, but it would. Okay, so I think that's the end of the hair loss segment. So anyways, how would you go about doing this? Like I mentioned with the ketoconazole, I would apply it once every other day, lathering it in and leaving it there for like 10 to 15 minutes when you're showering. Microneedling, 1.5 millimeters once a week. You know, I favor Sunday nights just because it's easy to remember. Finasteride, if you're willing to inhibit your DHT, you know, obviously there's pros and cons to it. I'll put up a video, a card in the corner called, should you take finasteride, yes or no? What a lot of people won't tell you who promote these, you know, telemedicine companies and pump the shit out of this stuff, they will just say, you know, the cookie cutter script of, you know, use this, clinically proven, blah, 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 but they won't tell you about the potential side effects. I would highly recommend you watch my video on, should you use finasteride, yes or no, before you start using this? This is a potent drug that will inhibit your DHT by upwards of 70%, depending on your dose. And this can have an effect on quality of life to some extent, depending on the individual. Now again, side effects are quite, you know, relatively rare person to person, but they are definitely real and can definitely happen. So definitely watch that video before I use any of the shit. Minoxidil would be once a day, one milliliter applied to the areas affected. Now you would skip the, mon the minoxidil on the day that you microneedle so you don't introduce it into systemic circulation, which would otherwise potentially cause heart palpitations and other sketchy shit that would happen when you're using literal oral minoxidil. So now, anyways, some of the before and afters that we see with individuals using this kind of a protocol, starting from like, you know, pretty far gone. We have this guy, the big three hair loss stack, hyper responder, insane three and a half months results. Now again, I'm pretty sure this guy didn't even microneedle. This guy just used the big three, and um, let's see, oh no, he did microneedle, so that's why it's so significant. Three and a half month progress, finasteride one milligram daily, minoxidil foam twice daily. Now you have to keep in mind, the actual way you're supposed to apply this stuff is one milliliter twice daily, but you can get away with one milliliter once daily. Like you don't have to be using it. The half-life is long enough that you can get away with a once a day application, which to be honest is kind of, makes the ability to adhere to the schedule far more tolerable for almost every single person because how many people want to apply something that can make your hair not look that good when you wake up before you go to work as well as before going to bed or later in the day like it's fucking hassle dude so ideally you only want to have to apply it like once a night before you go to bed shower in the morning and you're good to go kind of thing you never have to deal with your hair looking like dog shit so Anyways, this guy did three and a half months. This is only three and a half months in and the results are pretty fucking substantial. Like this was him at baseline and then he shows his kind of like progression as he goes and he starts growing out and you can see the temples really filling in. It's not just like he grew his hair longer. Like you can see the blatant pattern 
here, the male pattern baldness aggression here. Like this is a fucking recession and a half right here. And it goes all the way forward. And again, obviously some of it is growing it out and getting you know better coverage, but the hairline is significantly recovered. So to me, this is a pretty impressive before and after. Thought it was worth mentioning. There's a couple other stories too. There's a fucking shit ton, obviously. Like these are the most like tried and true medications in the hair loss field. And I've done many videos on kind of the before and afters. If you want to, you know, dig into them, you can check my hair loss prevention playlist. These are just some of the most notable ones I've done. This guy was pretty far gone. Decided to get on a protocol within, it wasn't that long. I forgot what the time frame was. I didn't put in the title here, but his hair went from, you know, very not happy with it, he was, to this. Very not happy with it, he was. It sounded like fucking Yoda or like Gollum or some shit. So here he was, he was like showing me his uh, his hair here. You know, I get, I get sent these before and afters like all the time, you know, like, either you know, showing me their progress or like thanking me for bringing this to their attention or whatever it is. And it's awesome to see, man. So if you want to uh, check out some of those, I have more in the playlist, but this was a pretty substantial before and after that I thought was worth uh, showing. There's a few others too. Let's see, like this was a guy who was basically fucking bald here, reversing hair loss at 42 years old. And he implemented finasteride, minoxidil, microneedling, and a laser cap, which, you know, how effective is a laser cap? Could it be useful? You know, maybe it'll squeak out another like one to five percent of progress. But to be honest, like adhering to all this shit is hard enough. Adding a t laser cap you have to wear like 20 minutes every other day is just another thing. And it's like, is the ROI really there to justify using it? Some people respond well to it, decently well, where it sort of makes sense. But for a lot of indiv individuals, it does not really move the needle, in my opinion. I bought a fucking nearly two thousand dollar laser helmet to test out the most high quality maxed out customized one and for me i didn't feel it was worth justifying continuing to use it was too much of a hassle so if i'm not willing to use my like sixteen hundred seventeen hundred dollar helmet you know i guess that kind of shed light on how useful i think it is for me personally so anyways this guy was able to make a significant transformation from baseline over to here within a relatively short time frame if i recall correctly if you want to see the details on that again you can check that out and then here was another one. This guy used Dutasteride. Now, if you have really aggressive hair loss, you could implement a more potent 5-alpha reductase inhibitor like topical Dutasteride. Now, again, this is a more potent 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, and it is something I would only check out and you know explore further if finasteride did not work well for you this is something that is going to wipe out nearly a hundred percent of your systemic dhc and is far more side effect prone than using traditional finasteride but it is certainly more effective in practical application as well as in the clinical literature and we see some pretty fucking insane before and afters when people use it and then again you can get into using topical anti-androgens like ru58841 above and beyond that as well but you know, as far as a newbie goes, I would recommend trying the tried and true shit, the stuff the FDA has approved before you defer to more like exploration, you know, more explorative, if that's even a fucking word, more uh, exotic and side effect potential ridden shit. That's why, you know, over the counter ketoconazole shampoo, microneedling once a week. Finasteride, if you deem it appropriate, given your tolerance to, you know, risk. And the minoxidil. Literally in that order, I think is like an ideal, you know, introduction to things. And do that for a year and see where you're at. I can almost guarantee you'll see pretty significant regrowth. With Ari, how much is he going to get back? Tough to say, but there is some pretty fucking substantial before and afters. Is he going to get a mohawk back? Probably fucking not, unfortunately. But he could regrow a significant amount to a point that... Anything above where he's at, I imagine he would be happier than baseline with. So I would imagine it's worth a shot if he has not tried anything yet. He could have, he could be a hyper responder and get back a fuck ton of growth. Like, look at this guy. He got, you know, was pretty far gone. And then boom, you know, like this looks pretty goddamn good to me. So that is kind of the introduction to hair loss prevention. Um, I could dig into this for fucking hours and explain more and give more examples of before and afters and whatnot. But I think that was sufficient. This video is going to be pushing 30 minutes otherwise. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, not bitchy, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including the uh, hair loss products I recommended. If you want to get something like a finasteride or a topical compounded preparation of a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, 
You know, that would be something you could coordinate through my HRT clinic. We have high quality doctor oversight from individuals who actually know how to interpret blood work, get proper diagnostics for HRT, for hair loss, for thyroid health, for whatever it is. We're turnkey, we do it fucking all. And it's by individuals who represent the same quality of inf information I put on my channel. And, you know, supporting the channel with, uh, you know, the links and whatnot or the coupon codes for this kind of stuff. Because this is stuff I use personally and I feel is the highest quality products in the industry right now that I think are definitely worth the money. So check that out. It is going to be in a pinned comment if you want to check out any of the things I mentioned. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.